25 and 26 and drop down to verse 50 and of the that portion. Genesis 41st chapter, verse 45 and 46. And they pick this up in the New King James reading. The Pharaoh called Joseph the name Zephat Pini. Pini. And he gave him a wife, a senate, the daughter of Pantagruel, priest of Rome. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Genesis 41, verse 45, and in the end, verse 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out over all, and out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Genesis 41. And it's in verse 45. And I'll try to cut across into the subject. And I'll give it the girl. A senate, a senate, a name that I saw jump out of the scripture some time ago, but I never really grabbed it. And in between verses from 46 down to verse 50, Joseph now becomes an industrial person. He goes into uh, dividing the seven years of good, seven years of bad. Um, he now knows how to say, put things away. And he knows how to be a frugal person in difficult times. He interprets the dream. There's going to be seven years good, seven years bad. So it's a cycle of the signs that we live in, cycles in our lives that it goes good, then it goes bad. In verse 50, it goes good, then it goes into famine. Verse 50 to 52, and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came. Who? Hmm. The Senate. The daughter of Pantifer, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the names of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all the toil of my father's house. And the name of the second was Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I want to just talk, if I can, and not rush to this. Watch God work behind the scene. Amazing. Watch God work behind the scene. Joseph here's name means uh, Jehovah has added. He's a fruitful person. He's being exalted to the place of prominence in governorship. If you studied his life, you know that he came from uh, hard times, sold by his brothers, and went through the time of being in part of his house. And then he's now at this place where he's coming out of this prison. And uh, from this prison place, he interprets the dream, and God's raised him to the place of government and management. Um, no suffering before, glo before glory. You're going to go through something before you get to your place of glory. I often wonder why does God make you so ashamed before he has you to shine? I think, it, like Paul says, so you won't forget who buffed you up, who made you look the better than what you think you are. Come on. But God does that for a purpose so he can get all the glory. I think he told Paul, said, he said, so that, that no flesh should glory in, in, my, in my sight. So you know that I know that we can all say that God did it. Many believers today, we know we're struggling. We're trying to understand the extreme battles that we have to go through. Wondering and wondering, is God forsaken us? Is he with us? Will our story end in defeat or in victory? Watch God work behind the scene. Am I coming out of this, this confined place to a prominent place? Am I coming out of this a place uh, where I've been, I've been sentenced, but now I'm soaring? Am I coming out of this a place where I've been suffering, now I'm renewed in strength? From sorrow to dancing, how will my story end? It will end in glory. Yes, continue to walk in obedience. You must do that and, and be close to God. Stay close to him. At the end of your story will be nothing but praise to the glory of God. The text that we dropped our eyes in, in Genesis 41, 50 and 52, it does tell us not much about this girl, Asenath, the daughter of Pontifer, priest of On, wife of Joseph. I have a few words to say about her in the context, but the basic things about who her lineage is. Her name comes from the name of a goddess, creative or wisdom, one that is, that is uh, wavy, she's over wars. Her name mentions this. She's also funeralized 
funeral nice, wearing that she's a goddess to help assist in burials. What a name to have. A Senate, a Senate clearly had a pagan name. And she was not a Jew nor a Gentile, but, uh, but as she was not a Jew, neither was she a believer in Jehovah. Watch God work behind the scenes. If you're single, just snap and say, God, hook me up. So, a sinner, <laughs> the daughter of Pontifer, priest of On, clearly she is a person that has a pagan background, priest of On, a pagan god. But somehow God was in his divine providence connecting her with Joseph, the next man to be in charge. And later they will be getting married and they will have two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Before the years of famine had arrived, she was going to go from godless, godlessness to a godly woman of God. Isn't that a beautiful picture? It's very important that you make sure that you get connected to the right person in this season. You don't want to be around godless people because they're going to have you godless. But godly people will take you into more godliness. Be careful who you connect with on your social media platforms. If they befriend you, send them a card and tell them thank you. Because everybody's not going to be your friend on those stages and platforms. Be careful, be careful, be careful how you get connected because it is true. Birds of a feather do and quack like a anyway so be careful what you get connected with amen? amen so pharaoh in genesis 41 verse 45 he gives joseph a name zephaphini the seer or interpreter a treasure of glorious rights or riches what a name he sees this young man that here now is given the interpretation of seven years coming seven years of good seven years of bad Pharaoh realized that Joseph was a great connection to have a connected in his life. Some people will come into your life and they are glorious treasures. Some people come into your life and they're going to be thieves and robbers. But Pharaoh gave Joseph a great name that he says, you're somebody that's special coming into my life. How beautiful and uh, um, excitement, exciting it is when certain people walk in your life and they're like, now this is a good keeper right here. This is a good person, you know. And, and you, you celebrate them because they came bringing something, adding, Joseph, something to your life. But the king saw Joseph and saw him as a glorious rest. There it is, the glorious rest, a treasure, a seer, an interpreter, and a dreamer. Evidently, Pharaoh did not fully understand Joseph's full name, which was Jehovah has added. Dropping down because Joseph then had become so blessing, such a blessing to the king to interpret the dreams of the seven years of good, seven years of bad, which I moved past that. And he moved him on to the place of he wanted him now to be in charge. I need somebody to run this since you interpret it. So I'm going to elevate you to run this. And he puts him over all of it. And Joseph starts giving his wisdom. He tries to give directions on what we need to do to prepare for the lean times. A new day was dawning in, in Joseph's life. Because all the bad things that he had gone through, God had remembered him and was getting ready to bless his life. He had worked out some things, and God had to work some things out of him. And hard times can work those things out of you. Big Mama used to say, don't forget where you come from. I think you about yourself. If you want something in this refrigerator, put it in it yourself. But it taught you about hard times and what it teaches you. School of hard knocks. It, it, it's a good thing. Amen. So, so we've been doing this for the night and joy comes in this morning. He's in a better place and at, at least the bad days didn't last always. So um, Pharaoh gives him a synod to marry the daughter of Pontifer, priest of On. Again, understanding this was a pagan god. And as Joseph looks at her, he admires her, he takes her on. He understands that now something's being added to me. I can't add good things on top of bad things. So I got to get rid of some stuff so I can take on the good things God wants me to have. I think sometimes our blessings are held up because we got too much junk in the closet. Got too many hang around, go around, knock downs, do nothing, get down. Got to get rid of them. I believe God is ready to, like Joseph, to financially increase us and get us to a better place, a prominence, but we have to dump some stuff off. Talk out of my quiet voice. Put your hand out like this. I'm going to dump this stuff right now. There. There. 
Now, this person in Genesis 41, verse 15, 51, Joseph is, 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 is going to his fruitfulness in his life. And God is adding it to him. He gave him a zenith. And later they had the two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. Hmm. We learn a lot from watching this story unfold before us about how God is beginning to bring great things into a sinner's life and also Joseph's life. Young 30-year-old young man, and he's there now seeking directions from God. Priest of on, rare thing that a sinner would be a worshiper of a false god, but God's going to connect her up with a worshiper of the true God. Watch God works behind the scene. He escapes this, she escapes this paganness of Egypt, and she now connects with Joseph, a sinner does. She has to learn more about Yahweh and learns it through a godly man. The truth is the living, true and living God is about to become her God, Jehovah. She's about to walk with him. So a sinner, although high ranking and coming from a pagan God, but yet she had to connect in marriage to this kid named Joseph. One that was going to make her life fruitful. Watch God work behind the scene. When God connects you and hook you, hook, you, hook you up, <laughs> The blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. If you hooked up with something, you're trying to make it work, and God didn't connect it up, you can be working for a long time. Hard, hard. Uh, God was adding to her life increase and not decrease. And if the person does not increase your life, it will decrease your life. Raise your right hand and say, the proof is in the fruit. If it does not produce, it cannot produce. So somehow, this connection, trying to connect to something or someone that is fruitful and increase in my life, it's a very unique thing, and God has to make it work. God has to make it work. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so here we are. I, I'm wondering, is this the ride I should be on? Watch God work behind the scenes. I jump off of what God's doing and jump on my own way. And now I'm on a train going nowhere. I'm on a bus that won't leave the station. I got a lift that needs a lift. I'm in an Uber that has no direction. I'm on a merry-go-round and going round and around and around. When he go round. I'm moving nowhere fast. I'm a hamster on a treadmill. I'm going over and over the same vicious cycle. The beautiful picture here is that I don't have time to play games. Life is too short. I need to get to where I need to get to and watch God work behind the scene. Maybe it's time for me to ask some real questions. What you gonna do with your life? Or you don't wanna be that person, just ask them, what's in your wallet? Anyway, it has to be something that's gonna be added to your life. A synod, birth, Manasseh, and Ephraim. In the end, they become heads of the tribes of Israel. I believe that God puts you together. When he puts you in the right place, then you are blessed. Your children are blessed and your family is blessed. Psalms 112 and verse 2 and 3. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in their house. Dr. Bill Winston, when he first said that to me, he said, now, say I receive it. I said, what are you saying, Dr. Winston? He said, I'm telling you Psalms 112 and verse 2. I told you, generation of the upright will be blessed, and wealth and riches will be in your house. Don't just say nothing. Say amen. amen. Okay, you received it. Oh, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> if from here, if from means I've, God has made me fruitful in my afflictions. Manasseh's name means God has made me forget all my trouble in my father's house. There's a lot there in these two sons and in their names of what they had to go through. But watch how God works behind the scene. I pray this year, I pray the blessings of the Lord would be upon you that out of all your afflictions and your toils and your troubles, that God would make you fruitful and that God would remove all your afflictions. I want you to truly declare and manifest that I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> God has taken all that I've gone through and made my life fruitful. Well, Pastor House, you're telling me then that I could not have received all that I have received unless I've gone through all that I've gone through. Yes. And guess what? You got more coming. All the stuff you've been through, all the drama you had to deal with, all the crazy you had to work out. And you're going to say, I'm getting my blessing. 
I know there's more for me. I know there's something coming greater for me. I know God's going to elevate me. I didn't go through hell to live in hell. I came out of hell to go to heaven. I want the best for my life. I just need 50 people to say I deserve the best. I'm not cheap. My trial told me how blessed I'm going to be. The long as I cried, I believe God's doing something greater. Perhaps Joseph, perhaps Joseph, perhaps Joseph. Perhaps Joseph and Asenath both had to go through these afflictions and God had to bring them together for a purpose and a reason. Both of them had dealt with afflictions and also sorrows and uh, unfruitful times. And God brought them together in, in marriage, willingly to use, use each other to celebrate and encourage each other. Asenath was a prize to Joseph and Joseph was a prize to Asenath. Part of us, and part, many of us, we see here in this biblical presentation that the, the gift of education that she had, the royalty that she had, but she still needed a Joseph in her life. Finally, she comes to the place where she begins to imagine Joseph praising God, and she begins to praise God, how God has blessed them and all they went through. You know, nothing makes your enemy more mad than when they see you again, you tell them, I'm on the come up, I'm on the come up, I'm on the come up, I'm on the come up. <laughs> Not everybody wants to be married. A sinner had to want to because Pharaoh gave her. Some people just want to live a celibate life. God bless you. Be strong. <laughs> but some people can't do that. You have to choose the life you want to live. And celibate, the celibacy does not just mean singleness. It's being set aside, Paul said, for the work of the ministry, 1 Corinthians 7, 26. So how long are you going to be in the church, young man, and say, I'm still being celibate, set aside for the work of the ministry? Or just set aside because you don't want to be committed to nothing? Anyway, you have to realize sooner or later, sooner or later you got to make a choice because you ain't going to fool us forever. You ain't holding out that much. <laughs> Come on here. Are you a man? But however, some people have this gift, Paul says, some does not. A sin of wanted to be married. I pray that the story here, hope gives you hope and understanding that God will help you through singleness. He will help you bring you to the place of giving you the right connection with the right person. Um, I know that, that being, being, being in this place right now that Asenna was in and being connected up with Joseph was a blessing unfolding. God was working behind the scene, behind the scene. Yes, the testimony of Brother Joseph and Sister Asenna gives us great memory and great hope today to know that God is preparing a perfect gift for you. God had to give Barnabas a Paul, a Paul, a Barnabas. Had to give Elizabeth a Mary. Had to give Moses a Joseph, a Seneth, a Joseph also, a, a Joshua, and a Seneth, a Joseph, and Jesus for us. He brought everything we need right to us, and then he said, I'll be God over it all. So when God hooks you up, you got a good hookup, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. We were a Seneth. He was Joseph, Jesus, the Savior. He comes now and connects us up with Joseph with our bad record, track record, idolatrous God serving. He takes us out of darkness, puts us into life with Joseph, and now I see you, I see you, a Seneth. You up there with Joseph, riding that chariot i see you i see you second in command you were nothing yesterday but now you rolling hard with joseph i like the way god works behind the scene don't count me out yet for what i'm not riding in watch what i'm getting ready to ride in you're gonna be saying hey hey the bible says all them that seen them ride road ride past, road past they begin to bow their knees down to them and make way they begin to see joseph in the chariot riding by and they said make way or bow your knees God will bring you to the place of prominence and exalt you working behind the scene. When you thought your life was a wreck, crack pot, and all messed up, just tell your neighbor, God's working behind the scene. I'm going to shine in a moment. So you better start praising God now because I might be the one you might need a loan from. Because <laughs> when God bless me, I'm blessed to be a blessing. What's God work behind the scene? I decree, I decree, I decree before I close, I decree Psalm, I'm sorry, I decree Isaiah 60 and 6 over your life. I see caravans of camels and maidens and people of Sheba bringing gold, frankincense, 
and worshiping the Lord. I see you being exalted. I see God, them praising God because what's coming behind you. You look at how I showed up, but tell your neighbor, look behind me. God's bringing something up from behind, gold and frankincense. He's bringing up worshipers and magnifying God. You see where I came from, but you don't know where I'm going. Watch God work behind the scene. It's your season again. It's your time again. Time to declare that I'm not broke. I'm just in between blessings. It's your season again. God's getting ready to raise you up and reduce somebody else. Make room. God is moving on the scene. I hook you up till you forget. He said to tell somebody this morning before the year is over, I'm going to bless you so good. You're going to be walking around stupid and praising God because I'm going to make you forget about what they did, how how they did it, who did it, what for and why. I'm going to make you so happy. I'm going to turn everything around to your favor. Give somebody half I tell them, watch God work behind the scene. Come on, stand on your feet. I have to get through it. I'm going to stop it. Oh, your hands up, Father, I bless you for this work. I was a Senate, a no name, nobody. And you hooked me up with Joseph Jesus. And my life has been blessed ever since. Now and I'm riding first class, upper class, top, yeah, <laughs> on top. Hold your hands up. And I thank you. You could have rolled past me. But you picked me up and you're not finished yet. I believe it's going to be better at the end of this thing than the beginning thereof. I expect a fruitful life. And if you're you and if you're me, I reach up real high and say, and I've planned to forget all of my afflictions. Give God praise and praise.